Hi everyone, Leilani Bowersack here with Coldwell Banker in Westlake. Going to give you a short but sweet rundown on the basics of your HUD website um, and how to sign up for an ID for yourself so that you can put in bids for uh, your buyers. Um, and kind of navigate the screen so that you're aware and familiar with what is actually on here. Um, so my lovely camera assistant, AKA my youngest daughter, Gloria, will be videotaping. So we're gonna try to get as close to the screen as we can. Now, the site that you're going to go to, and don't be um, confused with all of the other sites, there are a lot of similar sites when you go to search the official HUD site. You want to go to www, all one word, hudhomestore.com. Now, there are a lot of other sites, and a lot of these are either wholesaler sites or fake HUD sites. You don't want to navigate your, your buyer to these sites because it will lead them off path and the information is not correct. And a lot of them will actually try to sell them information on foreclosures that is not correct. So, this is your home screen once you get into the hud.gov site. We're going to, I'm not logged in right now because I want to show it to you as if you were logging in for the first time to register yourself. So your login and register buttons are right here. We're gonna get into that in just a minute, but I wanna show you what the home screen is gonna offer you when you get onto the site. So there's a menu that goes across the top. You have your home screen, which automatically, if you are somewhere else in the site, if you go back to the home screen, it'll bring you here. And this is where you're gonna to start to do a lot of your searches or to find a property that you wanna bid on. Um, Going across here to start the um, NAID application portal, that is for brokers. Um, if a broker does not have an NAID number, they will have to apply for one. We have one uh, with Coldwell Banker. If you do need that NAID number, um, refer to your manager or your broker on that. I know ours uh, under Joe Gazzo is uh, Schmidt, Schmidt without the T, so S-C-H-M-I-D then 6294, that is our NAID number. Um, but if a broker should not have one, that's where they would apply. Broker search is the menu that you're gonna go on to, un, well, usually buyers will go under this one and they'll search HUD brokers uh, that are registered in the system. And then you, they just put the co company name or state, city, what have you to search for different brokers. The BSCA search, that's for closing agents. So if you wanna know if your particular title company um, that you love to use or that your clients love to use, you can search and see if they're already registered. Um, our ABA Chicago title is already registered. And when you do put a bid in, that information will automatically pop up on the bidding screen. Once you start, type, type, it'll auto prompt it to Chicago title and that information will come in, but they are on here if you did decide to search. But that's where you would find any other company names that you are interested in seeing if they're a HUD registered broker. Um, on that really quick, if you do have a title company that your buyer would like to use and is really set on wanting that one and that title company is not registered as a HUD BSCA, they would have to easily just go onto the site and register themselves and upload through HUD their errors and omission and all of their uh, title contact information and then it would pretty much register them like we're going to register you at, when we get up to register. Property contacts. Now this is a really, this is a newer menu item and I think it is a great item. A lot of people don't know what this is for, but you can actually search under your state and say a particular street and this will let you know properties that are owned by HUD that aren't actually on the market right now. So say there's a house down the street and you see, you see signs in the window and a lot of these foreclosures will sometimes take up to a year until they hit market. And you're, you're wondering, you know, what's going on with it. If it is in, in fact a HUD, you can easily just put in the state in the street. And if it is um, an, an FHA HUD, then it will come up. Even if it's not on the market, you know that they own it and it will be coming on the market, you know, in the future. Bid results. This part of your menu is for properties that say you were putting a bid in for um, your buyer and say you were outbid, but 
you want to know the status of what's going on, you can just put the case number and the state, and then it would basic information. It's not going to show you what the bid, you know, what, what the other bid, what they got it for or anything like that, but it'll show bid results of the property, not specifics, but you'll at least see what the status is on that particular property that you were bidding on. Help. This is very important and I love each and every one of you and I get so many calls a week with questions um, on putting a bid in, uh, HUD, HUDs and foreclosures. If you go to that help menu that is at the very end of your horizontal menu here, if you go into the help menu, read through it, it gives every single common question that you probably would have and it will answer it for you in very, um, very specific and a lot of detail. So it has general questions. There's questions for selling brokers. There's questions for, you know, how to apply for any ID if you're a broker, it goes down into government entities, nonprofits, HUDs, the home store, updating your information, buyers, questions that buyers would have, uh, brokers and agents, what you would have um, as far as a question going on in your mind as an agent. So go through all of these. A lot of them are pretty much self-explanatory, but if you really go through it, a lot of it'll really increase your knowledge and not only the site, but the process too of, you know, after you register and you get to that point and when you are bidding, it'll help to make that transition a little bit easier for you. And then bid status at the end. Okay, so we're gonna get out of that and go back into the main main screen here. I'm going to go back to home. And what you see here is all of your states, there's HUD foreclosures in every state, including um, Hawaii, <coughs> Puerto Rico, Guam, Hawaii, Alaska, all of that. There's three programs right here. And I'm not going to go into detail about this, but there are bidding timeframes on each property. Um, they usually open up a new property once it goes into the system into um, it's called Good Neighbor Next Door, Nonprofits, and Dollar Home Government Sales. So once it's in that initial time frame, only these three entities can bid on this property. And I'm going to go into that a little bit in a second. After it goes out of that time frame, which for the most part is usually relatively short. So if you see a property on here and it's in that bidding time frame, don't worry. Um, odds are they usually do not sell in this time frame just because the market pool of those type of buyers is lower than a, than a normal um, owner occupant pool or an investor. Um, after it goes through this time frame, which usually it's it's usually about 14 days. It, sometimes I've seen them go as long as a month, but not usually. Um, after it goes out of this time period, then it'll go into owner occupant period. So that's when your buyer can bid as an owner occupant. You can't do it before, but you can definitely do it once it goes in. It'll say OO next to the property and you'll know that, that they can bid. And there'll be um, a start date and there'll be an expiration date on when they can, um, the bidding would end when you can actually submit a, a bid for that. After it goes out of owner occupant status, then it opens up to what they call as all bidders. So that includes your investors. So your investors would have to wait um, until it goes to all bidder status for them to put in their bid. Now, I used to teach classes for agents on HUDs and I can do this all day long. There's so much information and I don't want to jump ahead of myself and get into too much detail because we're doing baby steps right now. We're just doing registration and navigating the site. But I really wanna point out that it is very important that you as an agent have the responsibility to be firm on the fact that if your client is an investor and they really, really want to get this house and they say, oh, why don't we just put the bid in? <laughs> why don't we just put the bid in, you know, during owner occupant status? That is a big no, no. Um, you can get fined around $10,000. You can lose, possibly lose your license and it would cut off the whole entire broker from bidding on HUDs. So do not do that. It's, 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 a big no-no so please keep that in mind stay firm on what your status is for your buyer and bid in the appropriate timelines for that property okay so we're going to go back to here in the initial time frame for the bidding status you have good neighbor next door so what is that 
the people that can actually bid on a property when it's a, um, in the good neighbor next door period is um, law enforcement officers, firefighters, EMTs, teachers. <laughs> The nice incentive for that when it's in that initial time frame is these type of buyers, if they have that occupation, they actually get a 50% discount off of the listing price on the eligible properties. And it'll show um, when you search, you know, by county or area or zip code, what have you, whatever your search is, it'll show if that property is available for that. And they usually are when they come on the market in the HUD site, this will be the first opportunity that is given to those type of buyers first. Along with that, nonprofits can also bid on the properties in that time frame. Now, what nonprofits are is those are community or faith-based organizations. Those people can bid in this time frame, and they don't get the 50% off like the Good Neighbor Next Door program, but they will get up to 30% off on the property listing price, which is a really nice incentive also. Now, you'll probably get the question that buyers see, oh my gosh, I saw this home and it's on the market for a dollar. <laughs> what that means is when it is saying the dollar home period, yeah, they will offer a qualified HUD-owned HUD -owned home for a dollar, but only to local governments that foster housing opportunities to low or to low to moderate income families. And they, uh, also, it, it could be meant to address specific community needs by offering them opportunity to purchase these homes. So it's not for low to moderate income families to bid, only it is can be bid on by local governments for that purpose. So if anyone ever asks you that, because people will, that is how you answer that question. Okay, so we're gonna go into registering. So as a new agent, if you don't have um, a HUD ID, we're gonna go into register and up here, I'm not sure if you can see, can you see it? Yeah. Okay, you'll see public or bidder. You want to go under bidder because you are placing the bid. You're not the bidder for your buyer, but you are bidding for your buyer. So you have to register yourself. And, and our broker is a registered broker with an NAID. So that's where you'd sign up. So it's really easy. It'll just put um, the NAID type. You're gonna go to selling or listing broker. You're gonna click on that. It's gonna go down to username and password. So you'll wanna make up your own username, password, and do it again to confirm. Um, there's specifics on the username. You have to use at least five characters and a special character and a number, you know, stuff like that. Same, same thing with your password, but it, it explains that in more detail to the right. Choose your security questions, there's two of them. And then you wanna enter in all of your contact information, first name, last name, email, confirm your email, phone, and then fax if you have it. <clears throat> okay, so since we have done that, I'm gonna actually log in so that you can see what you see once you already have your registration. And I also wanna point out that, you know, don't do this at the last minute, like register yourself before you're about to put in a bid because when you register, it's gonna take 24 hours for them to confirm that you're actually an agent and that you actually are with the broker that you stated. And then you'll get a confirmation in your email. So if you're doing this before putting a bid in, you're, you're going to be disappointed and very upset at yourself because you won't be able to place that bid and it can actually make or break your time frame if you get that property or not for your client. So don't do that. Just do it ahead of time. Be proactive. Have your ducks in a row. Do this first. Have it done. And then if, when you need it, it's ready to go. Okay, so we're going to log in. Oops. Okay, so when you log in, this is a screen that you're going to see. <clears throat> Again, it has your home screen. If you ever wanted to go back to that main search area, you're going to have a review bids tab right here where you can actually review all of the bids if, that you place. Now, when you click on that, a couple of things about this too. Um, you can either search by your buyer's last name or say status. You know, if I want to see all the bids that I have that are accepted, I can just put accepted and then search and then they'll all come up. 
or if I want to, you know, search a certain buyer's last name, then I can easily do that too. So whatever your preference is, you know, you can search by that way and then find out and then go into the confirmation number for the uh, details of that property. Accepted bids. Now this is gonna look very different. If you do have an accepted bid currently, it'll kind of be highlighted. And then when you go into it, it'll kind of look like the same. I don't have any at this time, but this will lead you into another prompted menu of the um, criteria that you need to upload within 48 hours of having your bid accepted. And that's gonna be, um, you know, your broker's um, HUD registration, your buyer's proof of funds or their pre-approval letter, and then um, your title's ENO, which we have. If you need it, let your manager know or let me know. I'd be happy to send it. I have it on my desktop in case I ever need it. <clears throat> Saved properties. When you're in your property search, I don't have any at this, at this time, but you can kind of like when you're on a... Uh, HubZoo website and you can put the little heart, you can save properties that you want to kind of keep an eye on and that would come up in your save properties list. Very self-explanatory. Same thing with save searches. You can do that. And then if you ever want to change the email or any of the information you did while you were registering, then you can do that under manage your profile and um, do that. Okay. And then just click submit at the end when you're done. So that is it as far as registering and navigating the inside and the outside, but we're going to go back to the home page and I want to, I want to point out something very important here. Um, when you're searching homes for your buyer and I, I want you, you to, when you're, especially when you're dealing with a HUD, get into the practice of cross-referencing the MLS against the HUD website, because I'll tell you why. You don't want to have your buyer say, oh, I saw this great house and it, it's a HUD foreclosure and I wanna go see it. And then you print out the page and you make the appointment and you go, and then they wanna make a bid and then you go and then it's not there. Perfect example. Here is a property that is on the MLS. It's active. See at the top, it's active. West side, Cleveland, went on the market March 24th. Okay, it's a HUD. You'll see in the broker remarks, always has the case number and all of the verbiage that the listing agent has to put in there. But if you copy and paste that case number and you cross-reference it over onto the HUD site, okay, we're gonna put, you have to put the state first, so. Ohio, and I'm gonna put that case number in here. Watch. If you ever see this, it's, it just says search results for HUD home and nothing shows up, that means it already sold. So you're done. You can't bid on it. It's gone. Even though it's active in the system, I'll tell you why. These HUD agents have so many listings and so much turn on their um, volume that they actually do. It's really difficult for a lot of them to update this information in the MLS as they should be doing. And you want to check the live, real-time information with the HUD site because that's going to give you the correct information. Okay. So always do that. Back on this home page, when you go under Ohio, let's just look at, say you have, oops, say you have a buyer. I don't know. We're just going to show you what this looks like. Let's put Cuyahoga for the county. And then you can get more specific in your search, say if you want cities or zip codes, what have you, but I'm just gonna search. Now, When this is what comes up for all active properties. And when we were talking about status in the beginning with um, you know good neighbor next door and then eventually going into owner-occupant and then investors, your status bar is gonna be right here. And if you drag your mouse over that, it's gonna show, you know, where it's at. This is new. Obviously, a lot of new ones are going to be in that new neighbor next door period, but let's just click on one to look at it. So I'm going to click on this first one just because it's the first one. And this one is in Cleveland. It's going to show you all the pictures. <clears throat> It'll show you up top here. 
I'm not sure if you can you see the cursor on my camera. This is where you want to kind of pay attention to. So eligible bidders, there's always going to be stated right here. So right now, it's it's open to nonprofits, government agencies only, and owner occupants. So then your own your owner occupant buyer can bid. So you want to pay attention to what that time frame is. Say if your time say if your buyer's an investor and they like this house, but it's only in that eligible bidding period. Look over here to where it says bidding deadline, and that's going to show you when that last owner occupant status will open up to the um, investors. So the period deadline says four fourteen which is today. So tomorrow, this property, that line's gonna say all bidders and it's gonna open up to investors. So that's kind of where you wanna check your information to make sure. All of this other stuff is just square footage, um, the listing date, um, lot size, what have you. There is one important thing that is in here too, and then I'm gonna wrap this up. If you go to the addendums page, you can see or kind of get a gauge on, you know, all almost all of the uh, paperwork that they're going to throw at you digitally because now they do it digitally, which is amazing. It's so easy. It's through DocuSign. They send everything to your broker and to your buyer and title and you and you don't have to do the wet signatures and overnight it like you used to. But um, a lot of the paperwork's in here. You can kind of get an eyeball on what that would look like. But what I want you to pay attention to is right here, this property condition report. If you click on that and open it up, you can send your buyer this information. Now, HUD sends their own inspector in to take um, an at-a-glance inspection at the property, and it's going to go over things that they saw when they were there re regarding cooling, HVAC, electrical, wiring, cabinets, appliances, plumbing, water heater, sewer or septic, if it applies, and then the roof. And if any of these say no, then you want to take it more attention to pay more attention to the notes and the function functionality of why they're putting a no of why it's not functioning. So that's a really important tool. And, and also too, um, I've had in the past buyers that um, for, and I'm not a lender, so I, you guys can probably answer this better than I could. Um, some lenders won't pass, um, an appraisal with an air test. So if your plumbing says no, you want to definitely go back to your lender and say, Hey, this property, they're not going to turn on the water. It's saying no under functionality. Well, can we do an appraisal appraisal with an air <laughs> test? And if they say yes, awesome. If they don't, then you're going to have to kind of find another route to get this done. So great tool that you have there. And I think that's about it. So if you have any questions, please refer to your manager, have them email me. You can email me directly or give me a call, uh, whatever you need. Like I said, I can go over this probably for hours and hours because it does get a little bit more in depth once you get into the actual bidding process. And then with the um, paperwork and also with showings and 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 the, the differences with these properties so a lot of stuff to know but definitely you'll you'll have a another bullet in your gun if you know how to do this and do it correctly and know how to talk about it intelligently with your buyer so all right that's all I'm gonna say I hope you guys are having a great day staying safe and I'll talk to you soon thanks